You're listening to the Nerd to Know Media Network. Join us at nerdtoknowmedia.com. Broadcasting from the Blanchestan Center. This is Phoenix FM. The internet is a communications tool. Use the world over where people can come together to pitch bad movies and share bad. According to the Nerd Index, you should be upside down in a junior high toilet around the clock. This is the Nerd Index. Well, good luck. Tag is in, tag is out. Never miss communication. It's over 9,000. My name is Foxy. The balls are in there. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Nerd You Know Basis Show, where we talk about the new films, video games, anime, and Dara gets freaked out by the sound of robots. It we stopped. Start. No, it wasn't doing it. And then it just did it. I was like, oh. <laughs> I, don't know I, what am, I am Kean, and with me are three incredibly easily distracted people. Introduce who, who, yourselves in alphabetical who, order. Who do we complain to? Is that like a Mr. Zoom? I want to complain to a Mr. Zoom. I'm Dara. Hey, hi. <laughs> Moment of truth. K A before M A. Kev, it's you. It's you first. You <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, Dara, you can uh, you can send your complaints to uh, info at Tesla. <laughs> CC Elon Musk. I don't think he owns them. I don't know. I don't care. My name's Kev. <laughs> Musk owns the world, apparently. You know, he was in Iron Man too. <laughs> That does not surprise me. He was, yeah. He was also yeah, in Rick I, and I Morty. Mean, I, I was mostly focusing on Sam Rockwell for that. Like, so, like, who's ah, that's true. Sam Rockwell is... Mannequin Blue is funny. also here, by the way. <laughs> oh. So organized. I've had a Red Bull and today. As we've discovered, this. people who have K's their names cannot spell. Uh, yeah, but I've had a Red Bull. And I never learned, never tried. So. All right, your name does not begin with a K. It could. Now he sells hearing aids. <laughs> I don't. Kev does, though. Oh, my God. Okay. We've actually got quite a lot to cover uh, on this episode. Oh, that's, and, and, that's absolutely and I suspect we will have to fight through a giggle really. loop every time we start a topic. <laughs> I'm going to cover some headline things now that we aim to get through. Uh, I have seen the new Ant-Man film out of many thoughts. We also promised to review Fire Emblem, I think, two weeks ago. I still haven't gotten around to it. But first, we're going to lead with some anime and anime-related things because lots of people have lots of, th- of thoughts on new things. We'll yes. lead with the Netflix finale season, I believe, Agrat yeah. Suko. Uh, me and Kev have watched it. But before we get into that, uh, Mannequin Blue, are you aware of this series at all? Oh, yeah, I've seen a few episodes. Yeah, and like you're aware of the general premise of it and all that. Yeah, yeah, she badass. Yes, she badass. For anyone who's listening who may have missed it or may have forgotten it either way, it's a wonderful show kind of in the style of Hello Kitty about a red panda who works in an office and hates her existence. So she takes out her rage and puts a pent up frustration by singing death metal. Well, we it's, not karaoke. So much, it, it's not so much like the style of Hello Kitty is, except for the fact that it's literally made by Sanrio. I it was, is, yeah, it's Sanrio, I, I did yeah. in fact check that before recording, but yes, I you are right. Yeah, how uh, dare you? <laughs> no, like that's that was one of the kind of the crazy things when it first came out. It was like because it's very much that style and character. But then you watch that first season, like, how is this the realest thing I've ever watched? <laughs> Hello Kitty entire... is cinema rolling in her grave. No, Hello, K- Hello Kitty it's... is making cinema. Like cinema um... roll. <laughs> yes, because I'm glad you brought that up, Kev, because I did find watching it like there are some quite heavy, it's heavy throughout, but there are some especially heavy themes in this last season, which we'll get into. And I did find myself wondering if this wasn't about dogs and pandas and things, would it be funny? And I mean that like not as a criticism, but like as a genuine like comment on the making of it. Like uh, Dara, have you seen this at all? 
I've seen bits of it. I mean, she badass. That that's all that that's yeah, all there is. She badass. Yeah. yeah. I think like, <laughs> there, there's a lot there there's a lot to be said uh, about using kind of anthropomorphized animals to get points across. Mm. In that kind of commentative style, because there's another big anime called B Stars, which does a very similar thing, mm. uh, but much more kind of heady drama with a lot of kind of murder mystery plot elements, uh, or even like look at Zootopia. Uh, yeah. True, yeah, like yeah. That's it. It's basically kind of using that as a conduit to make to color it out. Yeah, um, yeah, and it also has the benefit of meaning that like you don't arrive with any cultural baggage or expectations so when they present these ideas like well i do know, yeah. i, I have kind some of a blank canvas like i you have know. some i have some expectations when i see that <laughs> dara's just like i have baggage <laughs> i have baggage no the and red I bring that with me to every show <laughs> every show every show yeah but unless you specifically like hit like hate hippos or something like no you know. but i love no but i love red pandas Oh, well, there you go. You see, that's the thing. So, like, yeah, even that bo- is part of it, like because like you're instantly kind of on her side because like she looks like a red panda. They are apparently one of the cutest creatures on earth. Yeah, they are. Yeah. I mean, how can you not be on her side if you're not? You're a monster. And listeners, if that's you, monster, monster. Uh, monster. Right, we're we're down a, a small minority of viewers now. <laughs> <for> that. <laughs> just, uh, that's just down, down key. That's crazy. I don't know what computer you got that's that reads future signs, but <laughs> you got to start selling that. How can you hate a red panda though? I mean, they're so cute. Like, and they stand up. Oh, best. Got beans. <laughs> so many beans. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and and the, before we get into the plot, there is something to be said for the way they very specifically cast the animals. Like the deer is like the flirt in the office. Oh God, help me! The one in series three, who's like the spurned love interest, is like a draw a dog with droopy ears. I think we mentioned that the episode we cover it, like you know. So you get a lot of character from the animal before. Oh, it even the starts. boss who like, is a literal misogynist pig. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Like it, it gets points across very. Who clearly. has a little meerkat as his like assistant and all they that? Knew oh, what they, they, yeah, absolutely. They knew yeah. what we were doing. Um, exactly. But, but, but yeah, Kev, let's actually get, like, obviously we won't spoil too much, but let's get into kind of the meat of this final season, because it's over now, which is kind of bizarre to think about. Like, what are your thoughts having literally just finished it like? I think to kind of specifically talk this season, it's a show that has that's had a lot of ups and downs. Uh, I think like the first two seasons are great and get, the, get across this kind of ennui of just the kind of the daily office grind of just kind of like, going through the life and times mm. and finding your catharsis in what way you can, if that's karaoke and death metal. Uh, and then it fully just season three, they were like, Hey, what if she's a pop star? And that just jumped the shark for a little while mm. before season four kind of brought it back around with, um, Haida being the manager, in, like insider trading drama. Yeah. yeah. Which was kind of relatable. This one, I feel like they had a, like, maybe they were killed. This has to end now. And they had so many ideas because I feel like this could have been two very distinct seasons because the start of it starts off with one of the characters ex- losing his job and experiencing homelessness mm. in a way that is very stereotypically Japanese. The likes of kind of staying in internet cafes and libraries uh, because they're le- unlegitimately like a cheap source of rent. Um, but then the entire back like third and like again, like they, I think the stress about these is they're short, like fifteen minute episodes, and like ten a season. So like it's maybe a two hour show out. So like six odd episodes are kind of like based on like that and the ramifications of that. Then the last four are running for House of Representatives, and like most of that's the half an hour long finale. If they just cram it through there. And I'm like, they could have spent, uh, like, they could have spent another ten episodes fleshing this out. Um, I I do agree with you. It does feel like a season of two halves. Personally, I because I, I watched the first season of Agratsuko before it came out just to kind of catch myself. I didn't know it was gonna yeah. be the finale. So that was actually of the final season, so that was kind of handy. But I going back to the start and where it is now, I'm hugely impressed that they followed through on. I hate to kind of go into one of those we live in a society type tangents, but, no, but, but like you'll you'll get it when I say it, which is that it sort of examines the harshness of day to day life. And in the last season, it feels like it had the most punch in terms of like they actually deal with homelessness and like the people who kind of fall through the cracks and how it happens to someone who's 
incredibly comfortable. And then even when it swerves into the political stuff, the politics is tied into that as well. And it's all stuff that's always been there. And it even bringing back the pop star stuff kind of made me like season three a bit better. So I felt like it tied everything together while still like delivering on the promise of the show. If you get what I mean, Kev. I think considering the time they had, they did it well, but I think it, it could have done with more. Um, That's fair. Yeah, but, yeah. But I mean, also Netflix as a house is burning down. So <laughs> watch it while you can. So, like, it probably wouldn't have gotten the sixth season if they had it. Yeah, that's true. At least it got, like, an ending. I mean, Mannequin Blue, would you vote for a, like, Red Panda singing, like, heavy metal uh, into the House of Representatives or anything, or a doll or anything like that? You had me at Red Panda. Just a Red Panda? Just a Red Panda. Any old Red Panda. Okay, well... Uh, I mean, li- hey, listen, Birdie's yeah. back, so, like, truly anything's possible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And again, a bit of Ocean Fade. Any of you listen out there, get your pandas, like, you know, yeah, red panda. the secret. But like, yeah, it's 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 a much more emotional season than I expected because we explain it and it, even including like the dark stuff, it does sound rather goofy. But like it's it's harsh, like you know, all this kind of societal stuff it gets into. Like there you know, it is, and like it's 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 warmth in character writing that kind of shines through, like mm. All one of some of my favorite scenes are um are 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 just kind of a Gretzko hangout with uh like she has these two kind of like older like ladder climbing uh, mm. professional women friends mm-hmm. that's a whole thing like early on and just kind of like it's very they just kind of will hang out and just kind of like support each other and that's just enjoyable to watch because it's yeah. very naturalistic. <laughs> That's a good point, actually. The The assembled cast of uh, the previous season do all kind of get a send-off, and they do kind of bring some lightness to it now and again. Like, there's an episode where the deer, like, gives a PowerPoint presentation on how Haida is unemployed and falling down into, like, video games and how, like, you can't, like, indulge him. And it's very her, you know, or, yeah. like... They're talking about some gossip about how to ending up homeless, and you think it's a very heavy moment, and the characters walk away, and then the hippo pops out of the locker and looks <laughs> gossip. And it's just it has that balance down. So I've just been hiding in my locker and I heard the juiciest gossip. Yes, gossip-like. exactly. Why? Why were you hiding there? <laughs> and it finally made like, I mean, I think people are kind of on the fence about Haida. I I the the boyfriend character, I came away from the season really liking him, which is just as well, because he is the protagonist for the first half of the season functionally. Yeah. They like it. I was worried that they were very like, cause they like, I was reading the room that they were going to go into like it. Cause it, it like, it's setting up that it's almost looking like not that he is cheating on her, but that like, it could be construed that he's right, cheating on her. Yeah, and yeah. like, I could see the blocks building. I was like, Oh, okay, here we go. But no, they like, there is like, there's emotional warmth between the two of them. It's clear communication and it all going to get cleared up. And uh, the girl he's hanging out with at the start of the season, they kind of just have a very platonic friendship throughout the rest of the season. Mm. And actually, I, I know we've got quite a lot to cover, but I'm glad you brought up that character because they clearly explain that she's like 21 and already she's given up on life. She's living <laughs> in these internet cafes because she just like does not want to get into the work market to then get trapped in the rental market to then like kind of essentially end up where she is better dressed up doing already. more work and she That's says mood. and she, yeah, and like she it, considers this sort of homeless lifestyle while not enjoyable to be more honest than what she's signing up for and it's really once because like you say kev it's she's kind of set up to be like kind of the the love triangle type character and when you realize oh that's why she's been here this whole time like oh because that was it it it, yeah like she's one of the big reasons why i feel like this could have been a separate season or broken Mm. up or just expanded because she set up as like at like as that love triangle at first and then that plot kind of ends uh and then they just kind of keep cutting back to her uh Mm. until the end until like the very end of the show and you realize oh no she's meant to uh, represent like the disenfranchised youth in an in an ever aging Japan, and it's like yeah, okay, and that, and that's that really ties... interesting. And I think that like they could have done more to explain to explain. Well, that. you say that, but the political stuff in the back end, it seems mad that we go six episodes homeless, four episodes running for Congress or whatever it is. Yeah, uh, and like, but then the whole point of it is like, 
uh, there's an entire disenfranchised uh, population who aren't renting and have no address, therefore have no vote, therefore have no voice. And like it all kind of it all melds together very well for something that sounds a bit shambolic when you kind of say it out loud, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but no, I like, I think that like, we, I think we're, we're, we're probably about time to kind of wrap this part up, but like, yeah, yeah. I, I won't, won't, again. won't spoil what? too much of it, but no, it, it's certainly for me, like I would recommend the show anyway. I think it's definitely in the upper ends of endings. I felt very emotional watching and nervous watching the end of it. So I would recommend this show very highly. And if you enjoyed <laughs> the old four seasons, I would go check it out as well. Yeah. I think it stuck the landing and I'd, I'd recommend it before you can Netflix. Uh, <laughs> because like, as I, as I mentioned, like it's, what 50 15 minute episodes like it's maybe like six hours six eight six seven hours total for like a whole tv show you you burn through a season in a night it's yeah. really really like digestible and entertaining i i can i can't recommend it enough excellent uh dara are you with us or i'm pricing a wine fridge online <laughs> Do they have that well, on Humble if, Bundle? If you can <laughs> distract yourself from your connoisseur lifestyle, <laughs> if you also had an anime <laughs> you wish to talk about. Yeah, I moving did. from moving from one fine vintage to another. <laughs> can you tell her, Dara, tell us about anime? So, uh, I've, uh, as myself and Kev were talking last week, I've been going to uh, Cineworld to see random anime. Um, and it's usually just me, except for like the two other people that show up for these events. And this week I was like, well, I don't want to go to work today. So let's go to the cinema because of all the layoffs. So I decided to just go to the cinema in the middle of the week, which is an experience because you're literally the only person there except for some random guy that rose, that shows up in the middle of it. And you're like, are you lost, sir? You seem lost. He wasn't. I don't know if he was lost or not. But anyway, so I went to go see an anime, um, which is, as Kev described, Death Note as a rom-com. And apparently it's a whole series. <laughs> and I didn't notice because I, I just... Think, like, it's wild. Sorry to cut you off, but it's so wild that like you had to see this. So it's, it's the movie for Kaguya-sama, Love is War. The yeah. thing is that that is, is three seasons of a TV show. And this movie takes place after those three seasons. So although I kind of like having no idea what's going on at the beginning. It kind of adds to it. And I don't know. Basically, it's a student council president and then like the vice president and they're in love with each other, but they can't really be because of reasons. No, and, there, no there is one reason and they're both way too stubborn. Yes. But, <laughs> but you don't, again, Kev, none of this is made clear. They, it picks up literally after they kiss for the first time. And mm. it's about them freaking out about are they, if they're boyfriend and girlfriend or not. Um, are they? At the end of it, yeah, they are, yeah. Okay. Ah, well, curse he, those sexual politics. Well, he won't hold. He won't oh. hold her. He won't hold her hand, and she keeps trying to send out meetings, and it's it's so many it's relationships fun. ruined by the student council body. Yeah, although see, I, I so I only watch anime uh, dubbed, right? So this was subbed, and I, it wasn't a problem. But I was just kind of like, I would have preferred this being dubbed. <laughs> I, well, you, you know, know I, I, it's I, not I, what I want, but I'll it's, take it. <laughs> I'm here now, so this is only an almost delicious meal. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, it was look. I, I would say the fact that you can just go and watch random anime in the cinema is a good experience, and overall, it's always weird because the same people show up all the time, and it's this awkward thing where you're sitting there and you're grown adults being like, <clears throat> I don't know what people think, you but this is true. This is four in the day, so I'm, I'm, I'm frankly, I'm surprised I haven't caught you in any of these because I, I also do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, well, Dara, what would you like in all seriousness? What would you recommend? What would you recommend this to newcomers? Would you? Is this, did you have well, a good see, experience? Ke like Ke Kev, Kev's like the expert on anime. I just think you know, it's like what people say about comics. They're like, oh, you know, I, I don't know where to start. Just show up, but like, hey. Yeah, and then you the know, people. yeah. I mean, that's what I'd recommend. Like, yeah, like Cine World just shows anime at random points during the week now. Um, it's usually on a Saturday. Actually, I think they're getting ready to. There's a big anime coming soon, 
I don't know what it is though. I oh, heard. there's a there's a new Demon Slayer movie coming out. That's what oh, it is. That's it. Yeah, Demon Slayer. Yeah. So they're they're getting ready now to to do like a big push on on Demon Slayer, but you can still see this in in Sydney World now, and you have to kind of go a little bit early. So I mean, take the day off work or whatever. But it's good. Like I really enjoyed it. It was so weird because, as you said, it, it it's very death notey and it gets very very full on. That's not it, like, like the like to kind of to, yeah to set the kind of the premise of it. it it's Kaguya Sama Love's War. The entire show of the movie, as we mentioned, it's this president and his vice president of a student council madly, deeply in love with each other, yeah. but are too proud, stupid, and stubborn <laughs> to admit it yeah. and, and don't want to be the first to admit it. So yeah, right. the entire so show... your typical Shakespeare, like... Yeah, of, except dumb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the entire show is just these two people just playing psychological war games with each other back and forth to try and connive the other one into admitting their love for each other. And it just goes. Okay. I would I would nearly say don't watch the TV show, watch the movie, because there's a lot of that in the movie as well. But because it's like a two hour movie, they kind of have to go somewhere. And it, it, you know, it, it. I don't know. It's sweet at the end, but you're also like, you're stupid as all hell. You know, it's like, see, <laughs> like all I, see that. That's why I would hesitate to watch something like this because I would imagine watching this at fourteen and fifteen and being like, those characters are me, and now watching it and being like, oh, smack your heads together. You know, no. See, the, the thing is though, it's 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 a, a combination of different things make this so palatable. Yeah. For a start the comedy is incredible. It is. It's, it's very so funny. so fun. Like it's it's very it's funny, a yeah. it's it's a gag show. Yeah, no, like, it is like they're, they're like, and the movie's the same again. I haven't seen the show, but Kev, exactly what you're saying is right. Yeah. Like, it should not be like you should be sitting there going, oh, I hate this, but it's, <laughs> there is legitimate laugh out loud comedy in it at points. Like, I can't emphasize funny. how, like, from the jump, how over the top the schemes get. So, yeah. like, there's there's no wow, this is so relatable. I can't believe that. No, these two people are insane, <laughs> and, the, and they're also rich, so they're, and they're insane also, yeah. and rich. Like well, no, what? No, rich. she's rich. Yeah, and that's, she's... she's the one that comes up with all the crazy schemes because she's insane. Yeah, and like she's got a she's got like a handmaid who is who might have who might have like trained as an assassin. That yes. woman, that woman's crazy. But like is, yeah. he's just like a working class schmo. Yeah, who and it actually goes back that it, apparently he worked so hard because he wanted to like attract her because he was a loser. And you're like, oh man, but it's good. Yeah. It's really yeah. Good. Uh, no, I like again. You know, I I like as Dara recommend the movie. I I recommend the TV series. It's on Crunchyroll. Like it, in a way, it's very digestible. Like Agresco, like they're half an hour episodes, but like the episodes are kind of broken up into like two or three just like bits mm. where it's here's where one here's one scheme, mm. ten minutes, and ten minutes there was like the next scheme. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and, and and another another um another anime that I I have to recommend. This is this is from last week. So Kev recommended um, Gungal Online, and it that that's a wonder. If that's also on Netflix. So I mean, you, you know, did but, hear that right by the way. It's called Gun Gal. Gun yeah. Gale Online. Okay. Gale. If, Gun Gale, if you Gale. like Sword Art Online, but don't like all the weird sexual assault stuff. <laughs> I haven't even watched Sword Art Online. You've already freaked me out. No, Sword Art Online is really good. I haven't, no, I haven't seen that side of it, but from what I've seen, the movies were pretty good. Again, I'm only watching these from what's on, on Cine World. I'm like, hey, and then I show up and go in and watch random anime, which is a much better way of doing this, I think. It's, uh, it's, it's probably a more like honest way of watching it, <laughs> like just seeing what shows up on Shuffle. It's, it's, it's just, it's so like, you've kind of like circled back around to how people watched animes in like the late 80s by just like walking in and finding a VCR. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I think this is a better way. We've, we've had notions now with like streaming services and the internet. Like, no, just randomly show up. Oh, yeah, no, we've had notions. You're, you're watch cinemas in chronological order. TV channels. None of that for me, thanks. Okay, well, tell us about Gun Gale then. I want to hear about it. So basically, Kev was like, if you like... If you like Sword Art Online, you'll like this. And basically, it's about a very tall woman who's very, very annoyed that she's tall. 
So she wants no, literally. So she just I, wants to. Audio no, that's what it's about. The wonder that was Katie's reaction there. Sorry, man. <laughs> that's what it's about. And she's just like she. She just she gets more and more frustrated that every game she plays makes her a tall woman. So she's so she just ends up playing call basically Call of Duty because she gets to be a three foot tall cute girl. Mannequin Blue, you relate, and it's, and it's amazing. How can <laughs> I relate? I'm five three. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell your height through the camera. <laughs> can you just met yeah, well, you know I'm yeah. small. <laughs> You have He's met like me all in the person. I was. I don't pay attention all the time. <laughs> He's like all oh, the mystery of this person who I'm best friends with. <laughs> who, who was maid of honor at his wedding? <laughs> Forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's I that's small. You, were my maid of honor. <laughs> you did balloon art at the wedding. <laughs> Keen, how did you forget this? Every day is like this. It's hard to get every day. <laughs> I'm concerned about King. This isn't a bit, ladies and gentlemen. This is <laughs> this is an, this is the most honest thing you've ever heard recorded on radio. Are you okay, kid? Do we need I've... to send someone? Look, all I forgot was that you weren't tall. Bear with me. You've got <laughs> the yeah, worst yeah, but you thing also I forgot. forgot I was at your wedding. <laughs> no, no, I remembered that. I just remember didn't remember that you weren't tall at my wedding. Kid, kid, if you just walk, if you just walk into me, any direction, you'll hit one of us. That's true. That's true. Look, look, Katie, you arrive with lots of distracting things like presents and balloons and makeup and stuff. How dare like, I? Like, like the, the height is like the ninth and a half thing to notice about you at any given moment. And I mean, I mean that as a compliment. I, I feel like that's not true. But okay. I don't think that's true either. <laughs> I I am so sorry. All I was trying to do is give you an opportunity to speak, and I've ruined it. <laughs> Katie, you should watch Gungal Online. Gungal okay. Online. Okay, that's what it's we were talking about. Yes, but, so but you'd not recommend to this, Sarah. Huh? You'd recommend this then? Oh no, it it it's a very good time. It really is. Like it, it, the episodes are very quick. It's just a lot of fun. The main character is absolutely hilarious. Hmm. Uh, the little montages they have are fun. And I mean, look, it, it's a good it's a good premise. Like uh, Sword, Art on, blah, Sword, Art. Sword Art Online is actually a fun anime as well. But this is a bit more palatable because you can kind of start from the very beginning with this. And um, it's just hilarious because, I mean, the premise is ridiculous. But then again, people probably have played games specifically to fantasy RP like this. Mm. And it's just good. You know, I mean, you're like, and she even says, she goes, I don't really like the game, but then I got into it. And you're like, oh, that's fair enough. Like her sole reason is because she gets to be this three foot tall, cute girl who runs around the pink. I mean, like, <laughs> listen, I've played, I've been playing Final Fantasy 14 for like the past three years. And the fully reason I started that was like, yeah, I want to play as a hot cat girl. Fair. And here I am. And here I am. <laughs> yeah, actually, because we've got Fire Emblem lined up to talk about. And I remember vividly a conversation we had, Kev, at some point where I think we were talking about the dating. It may have been on the uh, Game Corner episode where it was like we're talking about like, oh, it's like, you know, uh, I said, oh, you know, I always kind of play as the guy character, like, you know, because I relate to that. And then, Kev, you straight up went, no, no, no. I want to be the hot one they date. Yeah, no, I was like, <laughs> no, I want I want to be the girl because I want to be pretty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's why I do it. Yeah. <laughs> but Kev, I'm assuming you've seen Gun Gale as well. Do you have any other thoughts like on it? Like, uh, no, no more than what Dara. Like, I only watched like a couple of episodes of it. Didn't stop is it watching like a comedy or is it like an action or what? A uh, bit of both. Bit yeah, of both. Oh, yeah. Like, L yeah, no, like it's not super violent. Be it actually how to get right around the violence is quite interesting. Uh, it's all like in-game engine that's mm. what's cool about Sword Art Online and I saw it like I went to go see like random anime movies about it which was even more confusing because that's just like smack bang in the middle of a run and I'm like I have no idea what's going on <laughs> uh, but um, yeah I would recommend absolutely go for it excellent well as we kind of alluded to there like uh, we talked about sort of medieval violent settings and dating sims and that's just fire emblem in a nutshell and video so, games <laughs> we'll segue into that uh as we discussed in a previous episode uh myself and kev have both played a new fire emblem game but bizarrely two different new fire two emblem different games. fire emblem games that seem to have come out at the same time 
So uh, one is more of a sort of a hack and slash sort of type thing, more in line yes. with uh, a game that Mannequin Blue has played, the uh the hyrule warriors was it you had a game yeah yeah. that kind of that kind of thing whereas kev's is the more traditional chess like fire emblem type thing and so kev i'm gonna let you lead with this because tell us about the new fire emblem game oh i was really hoping you'd lead because i'm gonna oh no i'll I'll do it by all means okay i'll 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 lead on this one because please don't make me speak (laughs) speak on radio how, no, it's, I, I'm, I do inter- I'm here to do interpretive dance. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what, collect your thoughts. No, I, 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 I will I will go, like, because I think, like, better to end on a positive. I've really soured on Fire Emblem and Games. Oh, this okay. is not a, it's not a good game. I am um, genuinely surprised. What, what's, so, for, what's wrong with it? It's so dull. <laughs> I can't even begin. Okay, because, like... If you want like a kind of a, a baseline for this, uh, go listen to. D- did we do a separate game corner entirely about three houses, or did we? Was that in the one? It we was did? three houses and the other one, the Persona Five, were your two that we talked about yeah. because they were for that and three houses are distressingly similar. Yeah, and that's why I really like glommed onto three houses because they yeah. had that life sim. And actually, I'm glad you brought that up, Kev. But before you get into it, uh, the three houses was a game we both liked enough. To play through at least four times. Yeah, Me, I was on my to. fifth when I stopped. Yeah. So, like if it, so if this new one's dull, it's doing something oh. very wrong. So that's the thing. So like Three Houses was such a high benchmark. And mm. it's been like, it's been a couple of years. Um, so Engage is like the next mainline Fire Emblem game. Oh, it's called Engage. Oh, that's so tragic. Yeah, Fire Emblem <laughs> Engage, right? Um, a dull game called Engage. That's like, <laughs> oh no. Oh, it's brutal. Um, and like the whole so like a lot of the fire they come in and they have a gimmick so this one's gimmick is that being terrible no no, no, no. this one's this one's gimmick is um, that you can summon past fire emblem characters to help you fight and they like kind of give you power ups and then you can also kind of talk to them back and forth like the main one is uh is is mars from like the first one known for aggravating smash bros players because by stacking the smash bros lineup with fire emblem characters mars with blue hair and not to be confused with any of the other fire emblem characters not to be confused yes. of course with ike with blue hair <laughs> yes who is also in this game. anyway so that's kind of the general conceit but everything else by this is the most paint by numbers fantasy fire emblem story right you are the chosen one you find that out the moment you wake up you have amnesia everybody loves you uh within the first hour your mom who is also a dragon remember that from three houses dies (laughs) Uh, and then you just kind of go on a a cavalcade across i remember that from the gba game they all do that yeah i think you kind of go on a cavalcade across the world just kind of like fighting the bad guy and collecting people. But there's no character. Right. Every, like, everybody likes each other and likes you and thinks you're the coolest person on the planet. Well, I mean, they're not wrong. And it's so dull. (laughs) Like, there's no... To kind of go back to, like, Three Houses, it was a, like, that was a stacked roster of characters. Mm. But they were all distinct and, like... Because a like, key part of the Fire Emblem game is that like you can have support conversations with other characters. And kind of yeah, build... it's, I would say it's actually the most remarkable part of the game. Yeah. You know? uh, like, e- like even between like your character or between two NPCs, mm. you kind of like you build these relationships and you kind of build these 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 uh these friendships. And there is absolutely nothing notable. I, I've done about like I've like I played this game for like 10 hours and done about like 15 out of those poor conversations and truly nothing happens <laughs> like the best way like cause me like me and my fiance have both she made it like significantly further than this so i have it on good authority that nothing changes <laughs> <laughs> it's like 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 uh, is it principal skinner with the telescope like it's like 
10 a.m., 1400 hours, da, 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 such and such rotation, no sign. That's clear. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, like, I think she put it, to quote her, she put it best is that the support conversation, like, most of the support conversations follow the line of somebody shows up, hey, what are you doing? Oh, I'm picking apples. That's the C conversation. The B conversation is, hey, do you like picking apples? That's the B conversation. The A conversation is, we should go picking apples together. Who and that's it. Apples? And like, but like that's that's the entire like so many of the conversations just like are that kind of like mm. low stakes, low drama. If there is any contention between any of the characters, it is solved immediately. The character that killed your mom, you forgive her in the C support conversation. <laughs> Okay, because I'm really glad you brought that up because my gateway to this was the Fire Emblem Game Boy Advance game. And in that, like, first of all, it's a lot harder to get them to do support conversations. They literally have to stand next to each other like lemons for 40 turns to strike up one conversation. But, like, in that, like you were just saying there, you can get, like, this guy called Matthew and the assassin who killed his fiance onto a team together and it takes them a long time to just get along. Yeah. Trying to kill each other, you know, like. Yeah, no, there's there's none of that. And it's just like, it's hard to care about anybody about this game. Mm. Um, so like, I just, I couldn't bring, I, like, I, I find that like, I was never huge on tactics games and it was kind of a push to want my, my fiance Louise to kind of get me to play three houses mm. and it was all of the other mechanics the social aspects the kind of the daily grind stuff to kind of carry me into enjoying the tactic systems this has nothing else and then i'm finding the tactic systems tiring right and on top of that and again you can oh god i'm like because they rely so much on like the legacy characters they're not even interesting they well, couldn't this even, is what this is what I was going to ask yeah. you about because I played Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes, and in the first Fire Emblem Warriors, which, as you explained to me, actually was essentially Hyrule Warriors but with Fire Emblem characters. So thanks for bringing that over, uh, Katie. Um, it's like she's doing a thumbs up for listeners. Um, <laughs> it's basically the the notion of the Fire Emblem Warriors game was that it was all these characters, like a sort of a multiversal type mm. thing, all hanging out. And the joy was, even though I hadn't played most of these games, the novelty was seeing someone from one set of characters and another set of characters finding something to get along about. So there isn't even that component to no, engage. No, and on top, and, and actually, now you've also reminded me about just the one, th- the one other like nit that I have to pick that has been standing over even since before this game released is that this game launched with D with, uh. Uh, 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 like with like purchable DLC, DLC, priced DLC. Oh, forget uh, that. Which and do you want to know what the priced DLC was? What summoning the three houses characters? <laughs> oh, that's that's cheeky. And no. with and and they've now so that was the first thing, and they said it's like, oh, this is gonna be wave one, wave two, uh, the Fire Emblem Awakening characters, <laughs> oh, which is also sense. the other major thing, and like some extra levels. But by that point, it's like, why? Like, See, at that's... least if they release it like two or three months later, it'd be kind of forgivable. Like the three, like uh, three houses, like you got an entire extra house like a few months later. And it only cost you like the guts of 20 quid. Yeah, no, if you, you got a whole DLC house and a whole campaign. Thing at launch, that's skeevy. Like, yeah, no, like it's definitely, that's, hey, that's Nintendo being like, people like these characters so we can make more money. Yeah, exactly. and like that, It soured me from the jump and I have no interest in like, continuing. Well, let, let me try and talk you around on Three Hopes though, which is the other Fire Emblem game I played. How are we doing on time, by the way? How much is left? Still good, still good. Okay, all right. So um, Three Hopes is, again, to kind of reiterate, it's the, it's the Hyrule Warriors type engine of fighting. Uh, you run around, like Katie, you know it, you have a sword, there's a base, you knock out the base. It's it's dead simple. It's it's, it's actually based on uh, Dynasty Warriors. Dynasty yeah, Warriors, that's like the one I was looking yeah. for. Yes, yeah, yes, it's, it's a whole brand of games. Yeah. I think like, they, people call them Muso games. And the yeah. entire conceit is you go and just mill down armies of dudes. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So and satisfying. Kind of, and then they just kind of template various franchises onto it at, for varying degrees of uh, quality. Exactly. There was a Berserk one. It was not good. 
Ah, shame. But like, it's this is what I found fascinating about Three Hopes, which is the, for lack of a better term, kind of alternate side quill to Three Houses. It's I, set in the same universe, right? Yeah. And it's got this engine. So I expect it to be kind of a dumb as rocks, like fun remake of it. It's not. The premise of this is that you are introduced to Byleth or whoever the main character of Three Houses is. And they're like, no, oh, put, put like some to- respect on her name. It's Byleth. <laughs> Is, is it actually? I, I yeah. always name them after me, so I don't know. Um, so, uh, Byleth, and they're like, Here, here's your name. Would you like to keep your name from Three Houses? And would you like to keep your uh, visual appearance? Yeah, of course. I, I like I like what I did in my design. Good. You're not playing as him. <gasps> it actually does that. It yeah. does all that first, and then yeah. it like swipes to the right and goes, Here's who you're actually playing as. <laughs> and I know this because I put my name in as Byleth. And then he's the villain. It's I, so I, yeah, I, I it's will. So admit, audacious! I'm impressed. I, like, I've actually I have a little experience. With this I played. There's a demo that you can play for free, which is like the first like three chapters of the game. Yeah. I I did play that demo, and yeah, it's 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 an AU version of Three Houses, where there's a whole other character with another like divine god in them. Mm. And now you're the chosen one, but Byleth and her god is also there and kind of wrecking your steez. But here's and the thing, it's though. Got... I, yeah. I, I'm near the end of the first uh, plot line, which that's how much there is in it. <laughs> uh, I'm near the end of the first plot line. I've had it since Christmas. You are not the chosen one. The chosen one is still Byleth. <laughs> you are the nuisance that arrived <laughs> at the wrong moment and caused everything to go wrong. Because I, the plot, you can still pick your house, all that stuff. Yeah. But the plot is the war kicks off much, much sooner. People don't get along as well. Your your Claude, your whoever your house is, he's doing much darker stuff. And the mediating influence that is Byleth is not there. You are just a dumb as rocks mercenary who likes to cook food for people. So it's actually for one of those like hacker slasher games, it's surprisingly complex in its plotting. It's I, just, like go on Kev it's it's just that I noticed the dynamic very early on because mm. uh, I think yeah like in the first chapter you you fight Violet yes and mm. it's it, it it's a dynamic of like your character I want to say Shay Shez I think yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, who like is fully like it's just like Violet you are my worst enemy you are my mortal enemy you are the reason I put on this earth is to stop you and Violet's tired there's like I don't even know who you are. Exactly. It's like that. Uh, you took everything from me. Mm. I don't even know who you are. Yeah, Futurama did it too. Like the day that was it. The day that Bison graced your town was the most important day of your life. <laughs> For me, it was Tuesday. <laughs> I'll do the Futurama one there when the Zoidbergs take over the planet. You never thought we'd go to a museum and rob a missile. I don't even know you. (laughs) (laughs) But yes, sorry, I'd recommend Three Hopes very, very strongly. Obviously, you'll get more out of it if you've done the Three Houses. But much to my surprise, the plot is still as dense as like the original Fire Emblem Three Houses. Just the surprising thing is that like um, it's just if you're very familiar with the plot, you just see these things that keep going slightly wrong. It is the Fire Emblem what if game and i would even though the fighting is all great and all that i would recommend it on that level alone so i'm gutted you didn't have that experience kev but thank you for saving me 80 quid (laughs) so he says that say at 60 60 and to be fair though oh i didn't buy the dlc (laughs) oh (laughs) i think think it is like i think dlc is 30 i think it's like 90 total but yeah no don't don't just don't um (laughs) what i actually i i i came out i came out a little bit uh cheeky on this mm. uh, pro tip for you is if you have if you're already subscribed to the, to the nintendo online uh subscription you can get the game vouchers oh. um which for like for those that don't know no, it's basically that like you could buy you could pay you can pay 100 euro and you get like two game vouchers and they're basically va- they're basically valid for like a f- like a brand new first party nintendo game each Ah, okay. Now, the price kind of like it does even out because, like you know, most first party Nintendo games are like sixty quid. The vouchers are a hundred. If you're already if you're subscribed to Nintendo Online, that's twenty. Like you're not saving much, 
but like it, it's it, it's handy and so i had already pre-planned i was like okay well i know i'm, I'm gonna get fire emblem before i realized <laughs> what i was getting into yeah but i also know what's coming up obviously tears of the kingdom mm-hmm. the new zelda yeah so i was like okay fire emblem that's there that's in grand 60 quid data 50 easy They've announced that uh, Tears of the Kingdom had, like, they've, they've uh, you know, launched pre-orders, announced the date. Mm-hmm. Tears of the Kingdom is going to be 70 euro. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. So, I, like, I feel better knowing I basically only spent 30 euro on Fire Emblem. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I'm, that's how I'm justifying this to myself. <laughs> No, 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 exactly. Like, you know, it's like, like, video gaming is, is like an expensive hobby no matter what way you do it. Mm. Like, you know. Or uh, you could play the best game I played all month, spend 40 euro on it, and play something that's 20 years old. Metroid Prime is really good. You stole my segue! Oh, hold on, I, I have an update from last week. The Flash is going to be recast by June, and it's going oh. to be your man from uh, the CW show. No way! Yeah, are, you, yeah. are you, like, live from Hollywood? That's breaking right now. Can you hear me, Keen? I'm on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Here is the Flash coming out Con- of the Vatican now. Dara, considering how many times you've recorded and you have been on a plane, I can't put it past you that you've <laughs> landed in LAX. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah, so, the, yeah, so there we go. Ties it all together. But wait, did, isn't that movie just, like, fully done? Just yeah, but, re- re- but remember... Shoot? No, 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 no. Remember what we said last week? It's going to be like the... Oh, multiverse. It's going to be like yeah. the multiverse. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think we were right. They just kind of had to go with it and like, please don't just, be too mad at us. Just recut around Ezra Miller. <laughs> well, there is a precedent at this point in DC. Yeah. They just put, in they just many put, projects. They just put Grant Gustin's face CGI'd on. The worst Every thing time. is, even yeah. as I said that, I oh, really couldn't it. pick my favorite of three DC examples, you know. And they only have like nine films. But anyway, that's a conversation for another day. Uh, Dara, did you also play Metroid Prime? No. Sugar. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I, yeah, no, I won't, I won't harp on it too much. It's just like, it was a game like released for the GameCube and they put it back out. And I think like, I get the feeling because Metroid Prime is like one of, is a pretty big Nintendo franchise. Mm. They announced like five years ago that they're making a Metroid Prime 4, but there has been nothing since. All people know is like, they said they're doing it. Where is it? <laughs> so I think this is them kind of like soft launching where it's like, we've made Prime 1 for the Switch. But this time next year, we'll do Prime 2. Year they're later, kind of Prime slowly 3. slowly hyping up interest. And then, like... and then kind of start spinning the wheels on Prime 4. That's, that's, mm. the, that's, that's a game theory for you right now. Come <laughs> on. theory. A game um, theory. A Thanks game for watching. Theory. But uh yeah, like it it's it's a funny conceit though it, in Metroid Prime where it was a big deal at the time because Metroid, which was like kind of uh, normally a 2D explorer game, mm-hmm. uh Prime, its big thing was that they made it first person and like big and 3D. And a lot of people were like, Oh, what'd you do make Metroid a Metroid a first person? Is Prime the one that was on the DS? Mm. I don't believe... Okay. So. There might have been a spin-off of the DS. I'm not 100% right. sure. I only know the console was. Right. Um, but yeah, so a lot of people were kind of sketchy on like, oh, why are you making, why are you making Metroid a first-person shooter in like 2006? And they were right. like, no, no, no. We have, a, we have a fun gimmick. You can scan everything. <laughs> oh. And okay, like, Batman. <laughs> they I like, beat me to what? it. The thing is, though, having it's just all those riddle, weekend, riddle, riddle, riddles, it not even puzzle. Like there, there's some puzzles. You mostly just get lore. Thing is, that is the most fun goddamn mechanic in that game. <laughs> Everybody like walk, likes lore. Wa- yeah, walking. I mean, look, boss- I can't judge. I, I Mass Effect like scanned every single mineral and every single planet. I get <laughs> it. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, like fully, just like the excitement, like running in, finding goes. Oh, this is a boss fight. Okay, wait, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta scan the visor. I've only got this one chance. <laughs> Well, that's the pro ZD thing, isn't it? Just like going to every single corner to check. Oh, just rubbing your face up on everything. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But yeah, no, Metro Prime, 40 quid. Uh, Don't buy Engage. (laughs) Save 20 quid, buy Metro Prime. (laughs) Yes. And Tears of the Kingdom. Or with that, you could go see the new Ant-Man film three times. 
Yeah, I've seen it twice. Have you actually? Yeah. Oh, you I... actually have seen it. Okay. Yeah, it. It. I liked it. I wouldn't mind so, when when we were recording last week, Kev. It, we were like, like, oh, this is bad, and that's good. Yeah, but, uh, no, we I, like. Let's hold on now. I want to set the record straight here. The movie was not out when we recorded, and we let never we let everything before. We let everything with. We are speculating because the reviews are bad. This is true, and you know what? To be honest with you, I'm like from now on when it comes to the critics. They don't know anything. Everything they say is good is bad. Everything they say is 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 bad is good. I, I I'm glad you brought that up, Dara, because I I saw the I avoided the reviews um before seeing it this afternoon, and then I saw it and I came out. and was like, oh yeah, yeah, that was pretty good. You know, not yeah, that like, was my like reaction Panther too. Too good, but good. And then like the reviews were like, it's all like four and a halves and like two and a halves and like okay, what and like sometimes one and a halves. What's what's the big discrepancy? Like, what's your take on this, Dara? I think unless I, I think unless it, it's a message film mm. or it's it's you know the, the critics are like oh I just don't like it but if it's just a straightforward action movie which now look was it good no was it bad no did I enjoy it yeah okay that well, was it. Do- it was fine it was fine I mean it didn't it didn't really set up anything I mean if you've seen Loki. You've kind of seen the movie. Mm. Ant Man is, I mean, it has moments where it's really good. His daughter and him are quite sweet. I mean, she's insufferable at the beginning. She needs a good L slap. But like, I actually disagree. Really she, she was the one who stole the film for me. Yeah, I know, but she's like, she's just like, oh. Wait, you know. hold on, guys. Let me just mark the board. Uh, one for one more this episode for Dara advocates bullying. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little one, just to be like, <laughs> just, just, just brackets bullying. children. No, I mean, just a like, taste of bullying. No, because she's like, she's like, oh, I know you saved the world, but what have you done lately? It's like she saved the world. You know, what, I'm <laughs> what do you want them to do? What have you done for me lately? Literally, that's what she says. She says that, and it's like, oh, you're insufferable. So a little slap wouldn't have went awry, you know. Um, See, I, that was the bit of the film I enjoyed the most because at least she'd reached. It was doing that typical like, you're gonna hate me for saying this, like that typical Force Awakens thing where the kid has grown into the character from the first film. Yeah. So like, Ant Man One is him getting bailed out of jail, and that Ant Man Three is his kid getting bailed out of jail. I like that ingredient yeah, no, to I, it. Could have been mean, explored more, but I like yeah. that ingredient to it. Yeah, I mean, I look, I, I think, you know, when she when she stopped being insufferable, she actually came around and it was mm. grand. I just, it, I was, I was struggling with what kind of movie it was trying to be, you know? That's a mean, good like, point, yeah. Because with, with Ant-Man, it, it's kind of hard because it's like, the whole appeal of Ant-Man is he gets really small and then gets really big and he's kind of a joke character, but they put a lot of weight on him now with this and they're like, oh, you have to go do this. So when he goes down to the quantum realm and that, that spoilers alert, the whole movie takes place in the quantum realm and you're kind of sitting there going, it's no, in the title, it's not a spoiler. I kind of, you know, but I mean like the whole movie, they're there the whole time hmm. um, and it does kind of, it, it links up with, with, with Morduk and stuff like that coming in and I mean, look, if you're expecting, like I kind of, was, I was expecting that man to die Quite legitimately, I thought that that's what was that's what you're setting up for. Um, and he didn't do that, obviously. Spoilers there, but I mean, they kind of set the table nicely to be like, right, we've met Kang, we know what he can do, and his they kind of go into Rick and Morty a little bit, you know, with the the council. Yeah, without giving away too much, they do get the mission statement of the next phase of Marvel out there. Yeah. And I, I mean, look, there's only, I think with phase four kind of fumbling the ball in certain areas, they're like, we're just going to be really, really obvious. Here's exactly what's coming. Yeah. And they did that. And then they, they tied up a Loki at the end and stuff like that. So look, it, it, it it's, it's fine. I just don't see where people were like, oh, it's terrible. I'm like, yeah, no, it's, it's really not. It's yeah. I'll, I'll, and I'll say this. I brought my kid with me and like, I was like, oh no, she's not. She's gonna be big and scary. She loved it. Yeah, she, because the whole film, and this is the ingredient that worked the best for me, actually, apart from like the father daughter relationship, which is once the film gets going into the quantum stuff, it's like it's not the best special effects in the world necessarily, but it's the imagination behind it is so kind of avatar-y. Everything's like yeah. a weird looking creature. Yeah, there's like it's a very good. walking stick of broccoli. Like it's such I mean, a that's... pretty film to look at, and it's I always. Thought... At least for the first two thirds of it, it's always throwing new interesting things at you visually and in terms of like the world building and stuff. Three yeah. times my kid leaned over and went, 
I love this. <laughs> you know, because it kept I'm... giving you interesting things. And I like that. And actually, the comedy was only very sparingly in there. Yeah. The sort of Ant-Man one-liners. And so I was kind of glad to see that they were actually taking a slightly different tone with it, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, it's a very different Ant-Man movie. It's a lot better yeah. than the second Ant-Man, which was quite, kind of bad, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because the... Everything I wanted from a second Ant Man was in this one. I agree. I wanted, I was yeah, I was I wanted to learn about Michelle Pfeiffer's character. I wanted to see the quantum realm, and I wanted the characters expanded a little. Didn't get that in the second one. Got it in Spades here in this one with a dose yeah. of Kang thrown in. I'm not yeah. saying it's like the best Marvel film ever, but I really enjoyed it from start to end. Like, yeah, no, I'm the same. I I thought it was probably one of the best experiences with a Marvel property in in a while. Mm. Um and uh, again we were me and Kev were talking about this last week. I was expecting it to be terrible, and mm. I, I when I walked it, I was like, I need to go see this again just to make sure. That's why I saw it again to make sure this would like, benefit from like a three D or an IMAX or something. I'd say. Yeah, it, it 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 felt like a big event movie, even though the stakes were limited because you're like, mm. well, Kang's going to come back, and you don't realize he's going to come back. In but every even that's something possible, nice for you know? Marvel though, because Marvel for the longest time have been all oh, that thing. It's coming down the road. Just, yeah. just you wait. It's like in South Park when, like, oh, the dragons are on their way any minute now. So it's nice that they're like, here's our baddie. Here's what yeah. he does. He's yeah. here now. He's also yeah. going to be here later. Enjoy. Yeah. You know, exactly. like, yeah. it's and nice look, to have that to it. Again, if someone can be like, oh, this is why it was bad. And I have seen videos of people like, this is terrible. It's like, mm. I get where you're coming from, but it's also like, they, they had to do something like this. They had to be a bit more heavy handed than they, they were because like yeah. the slow setups of four obviously weren't working. I mean, Tor four, even though I saw it five times, achieved nothing. Mm. And I was like, this is a movie about nothing. It's like that's so-so. true. That and Black Panther 2 kind of are like very much are like, OK, here's the next thing that's happening in this world. You got yeah, a great sense of movement from both of those two. Yeah, it, it doesn't kind of like reset where they're going. And I think mm-hmm. with this, like an interesting thing with Marvel as well, they've announced that they're going to drop the numbers of things they're releasing. So they're only doing two shows next year. Uh, uh, if, if only for the poor special effects people. Good. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, we are out of time, by the way. Okay. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We're just oh, yeah only only when things get moving, of course. Um, oh, this episode's but... been moving like a freight train. Are you joking yeah. me? Um, this train don't stop. We we got everything on the list and Dream my lack of road. memory of my own wedding. Are you kidding? Uh, <laughs> um, Seriously, so book we, mannequin blue to do weddings. She's great. We have been at uh, Nerds No Media. You can find us on all of our socials. Find us on our website, nerdsnomedia.com. Yeah. Um, let's do plugs. Uh, Dara, where can people find you? Uh, usually at my house, but don't come here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> maybe Especially that, if you're like a black belt. Yeah. yeah I just, just uh, like, maybe know. Saturday is in a cinema world if you're one of the two other guys that go to the anime movies. <laughs> That's true. So usually you can find me at Cine World hanging out. Just don't come over. That'd be weird. Um, <laughs> but no, you can follow me at DaraWV on Twitter. Um, I'm trying to do Twitter more again. Um, tweeting about random things. Um, there's also like streams as well. I don't have time to do them. Man- follow Mannequin Blue. Uh, they do all the streams but I will plug Humble Bundle again because I, it's been a while since I bought one and by the time this goes out it's it's not going to be there so I've actually finally managed to get Ambition a Minute in Power uh, which is a game I wanted on my Steam list for about a year and now I just got it for like 11 euros so I'm going to be playing that it's going to be a fun time and then have a Kaiju dating sim to play you always drop the most interesting things right as we're rapping you got to keep them on to more can you please remember that for next week? <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, since you kind of segued anyway, uh, Mannequin Blue, do you want to plug yourself? Always. <laughs> um, yeah, come follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Mannequin Blue. I just made affiliate, Yay! which is very exciting. Um, so come follow me for shenanigans. We stream video <laughs> games, art, balloons, all sorts of random stuff. It's good crack. Excellent. Kev? Uh, you can just find me on Twitter at KevTalk94. And here, mostly. Uh, that's, you do yeah. live here. I do live here. Apart from the fact we've discovered all your houses are near each other, but you know. Near is relative. Just making we might that be easy the, for the fans we might be in the at same, home. We might be in the same county. It's there's, not There's close. country roads. <laughs> Take me home. home. <laughs> to the place oh, where no, Tara no. lives.
But don't go to West Dallas Virginia. No, I, I it's not where it. he lives. <laughs> 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 okay, and uh, I, I don't have much social stuff, but I am reviewing Picard for Geek Ireland at the moment and doing all the retro reviews on Star Trek films. So if you go to Geek Ireland, more often than not, if it's Star Trek, you'll hit my writing. So give it a like and a read if you in that order. Just like it first. Uh, but we'll be back next week, hopefully with a kaiju dating sim. Uh, yeah. But until next time, I've been Kian. I've been no. <laughs> and Mannequin Blue. <laughs> Save that 10 seconds. That's the most <laughs> nerd to know thing that's ever happened. <laughs> Bye. 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 All right, so you're listening to the podcast. You're like, hey, I'm not in Ireland. How do I get in touch? Well, TuneIn has you covered. That's how you can check us out live when we're on the radio. Um, you go to TuneIn and download the app, or you can check out the live streams on nerdthnowmedia.com or phoenix92.5 FM. If you want to get in contact with us, it's very easy. Nerd no Media everywhere. Nerd no Media on Twitter. Nerd no Media Instagram. Nerd no Media on Twitch. Nerd no Media at gmail.com if you want to reach out via email. Hope to hear from you soon. Thank you for listening to a Nerd to Know Media production.